Uh, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Uh, so let us go for the first use of the general journal entry. This is the first use. Setting up opening balance and accounts. What do you mean by this one? Setting up opening uh, opening balance and the accounts means that if you use the QuickBook for the first time, but your company exists in the market from the long past, right? It means already your company was running and now you have used QuickBook. If you use the QuickBook now, how you can enter your closing balance uh, of the previous year in the QuickBook or how we can we can say you have you can enter your balance of assets your balance of liabilities as well as your balance of capitals in the QuickBook why because uh, initially you may have used the manual system of accounting or may have used several other accounting softwares and so on but now you use QuickBook so if you use QuickBook definitely there are some opening balances right some opening balance if you have opening balance how you can enter those data into the system if this is so so the best way is the general journal entry right but remember one thing <clears throat> if you have opening balance the opening balance is either asset or capital or liability opening balance cannot be expenses as well as opening balance cannot be revenue why because we thought these things in accounting that uh, three sort of accounts are permanent accounts, asset, liability, and capital. So they can have opening balance. It means they can carry from one year to another year. But revenue and expenses, these accounts are temporary accounts. Also, we can call it nominal accounts. They cannot carry from one accounting period to another accounting period. And the next thing regarding uh, opening balance uh, rules. If there is any opening balance rules, always opening balance of assets or debit and opening balance of capital and liabilities or <coughs> credit so taking these things in mind let us go for making recording the opening balance of some transaction right go for the company panel then make general journal entry uh, let us say from the previous accounting period uh, there are some balance for me i have to enter this one in the quickbook right Go in the account, select, for example, what you have from the previous accounting period. For example, I have PT cash, right? How much PT cash? For example, I have 10,000 PT cash. That's good. One asset. And the second one is, for example, bank account. We know bank account is asset. Let us record this one also. For example, I have one lakh opening balance of uh, this bank from the previous. Again, this is asset. Should be debited. Uh, let us say, for example, I have... Uh, uh, we can say inventory also from the previous accounting period how much inventory do i have for example i have one like fifty thousand inventory from the previous accounting period so several number of assets if you have you can mention it right but of course uh, please take care of the account receivable right at the same in the in one journal entry you can enter only one account receivable or one account payable it means at the same journal entry, you cannot enter more than one account receivable as well as more than one account payable. As well as in the same journal entry, you cannot enter account receivable and account payable both together, right? So this is a limitation that you cannot. But take one thing in mind. If you have opening balance of account receivable as well as opening balance of account payable, the best way to record the opening balance of that one is go for the vendor as well as go for the customer for account receivable create an advice and for the vendor of course enter a bell into the system right so that is the best way but you can manage one of them in the quickbook let us say for example i have selected account receivable if you select account receivable of course mention the amount let us say for example amount this one like twenty thousand. and of course when you select the account receivable or account payable you have to select the name from which customer you have to you have to pay right or see this is one of another this is another limitation this account receivable has belong the whole customers it is a general term so this one like 20,000 might be belong to several customers but here you can select only one so the best way to record the account receivable or account payable is what advice for the account receivable and of course interval for account payable but for this time let us assume that this account receivable is one like two account receivable of one like 20,000 is only belong to one of our customer by the name of Abdul Latif, right? So this was the balance. Now, how much balance is there on this side? I'll remove this one. This is a mistake. 
Now let us go on this side to make or to record the credit accounts. Let us say, for example, from the previous account in Preud, we have loan account. What account? Loan account. How much is the loan? For example, let us say loan is amount of 40,000. This is one of the, the credit or liability account. Next one, for example, what else we can mention? For example, uh, from the previous accounting period, we have uh, sales tax liability, right? Mention sales tax liability. How much sales tax liability do we have? For example, 50,000 sales tax liability we have, right? Mention another accounts which you have as a liability. If you don't have liability on that case, you can mention, for example, let us say the rest of the amount is a contribution by one of the owner. As some of the amount is contributed by one owner. Let us say, for example, uh, one lakh ninety thousand is contributed by owner one, and let us say, for example, I don't know whether both can happen at the same time or not, but let me check out. Owner two, for example, contributed one lakh. Right? So now the debit and the credit, both sides are. Equal. So if both sides are equal, so then you can click click on this one, right? If you want to close it, save and close. Otherwise, if you want to go for the new, collect on this one, right? You must specify the vendor names for the sales tax. Yes, yeah, very good. So any time if you select payable and so on, so you have to select the name of the person, right? So it's a witness for you guys that any time you have selected any account payable or account receivable, you have to specify the person. So let us say, for example, our account payable is payable, tax is payable to Ministry of Finance. So select Ministry of Finance. So why? Because says tax or all tax are payable to the Ministry of Finance. So you have to select that one. Go and save it. So this is safe. If you have several other transactions, we can do it. But let me check one more thing that, as I said previously, you cannot uh, record more than one account payable as well as more than one account receivable in the same, uh, we can say, uh, journal window. Let us check that one whether we can do it or not, right? Let us say, for example, once again, uh, we have two or three accounts as an opening balance. And this time, let us say, for example, uh, one another bank is AIB Bank. My AIB Bank has opening balance. How much opening balance? Let us say one lakh, like, right? This is the balance. Uh, let us say, for example, from the previous period, I have a uh, asset accounts as well. Mention some of your asset. Let us say I have equipment, opening balance as equipment, right? To like equipment. So that's all. Uh, let us say now uh, we have account receivable as well. As well, where is account receivable? Let us say account receivable. How much account receivable? Let us say account receivable is amount of ten thousand. But from whom? Mention the name of the customer from Esanola, and then of course mention your account payable, right? So I have account payable as well. Account payable of how much? Uh, let us say it is 30,000. 30, and after that, of course, mention your equity. Let us say this is equity. Now you save it. If you save, there's a warning. QuickBook, uh, now use the fixed assets and the fixed asset listing report to track the fixed asset. If you want to create or edit a fixed asset items to track this asset now, you can do so from the fixed asset list. From the menu, select fix assets item list and then either select the appropriate items or edit it or create a new. Okay, it is fine, so leave this one. See, they leave that message basically. That was a kind of uh, pop up message. This message, <coughs> I, was, I was just waiting for this message to see this one. There's a warning you cannot use more than one account receivable or account payable account in the same transactions. I have selected two accounts, right? One account receivable and one account payable. So QuickBook specify that you cannot select it, right? Let me change this account payable to something else. And let us see that's also not possible. And instead of account payable, let me select payroll liabilities. If you again click on this one, again QuickBook show a warning that general journal entry do not affect payroll liabilities. To adjust the payroll liabilities from the payroll menu, Choose adjust payroll liabilities and so on. It means so you cannot select this one as well. So for this purpose, you have to go for the employee section and manage it from there itself. So at this in the same, so you cannot select uh one more than one account receivable and account payable as well as you cannot select the payroll, right? So what else we can select? So you can select some other loans account. For example, I have selected this one. Now you can save 
if you want to save you can save it right it is possible so take these things in mind so in the next video inshallah we will discuss the remaining part so that is uh, reassigning account